Welcome back to Master Data Management 1. In the previous video, you set up the Atomsphere start shape for your MySQL to MDM process. It's now time to prepare our map shape that will transform our data into the proper format for the MDM repository. Let's briefly discuss the map shape and how we will configure it for our MySQL to MDM process. The documents coming from the MySQL database are going to be in the database format so it will not fit the structure that we've set up for our contact model. This poses a problem because if the data doesn't match the format that the contact model is expecting, you will receive an error when running your process. Luckily, we can fix it using a map shape. You may remember from Boomi Essentials that a map shape transforms one structured data format or profile to another. In our case, we'll be transforming our XML files to CSV flat files. Each map contains a source profile your input data, and a destination profile, your output data. These profiles can be imported into the map based on a sample file or schema, or can be manually created. Once the profiles are loaded, it's time to map the corresponding elements. To map elements, simply drag and drop each source profile element to one or more destination profile elements. So let's go ahead and see how we can set up our map for our business use case. For our first process, we will transform the MySQL database structure into the XML structure of our contact model. One thing that is important to understand is that each model you create gives you the option to use XML, database, or JSON format. Once you pick a format for your model, you must transform the data to the correct format before the MDM repository will accept that data. Changing the format is very simple using the map shape. All you'll need to do is create a new map shape insert the profile found in the MySQL connector operation into the sources profile section, then insert the profile found in the MDM connector operation into the destination profile section of the map. Finally, all you'll need to do is map the source elements to the destination elements, and then you'll have a working process that will pull data from the MySQL database and insert it into the MDM contact repository, resulting in your first golden record. You may notice that the process we are building is pretty simple. The reason is that the MDM tool comes equipped with a number of validation and enrichment tools built right into it. It is a best practice to handle any validation and enrichment within the MDM platform whenever possible. The MDM tool has a built-in configuration to help you protect your data, which will ultimately help your data from becoming corrupt. Any changes made outside of the MDM tool further increase the chances of your data becoming corrupted. Let's take a look at how we can set up our map shape for our first process. I'll demonstrate exercise 13, where I will configure the MySQL map shape. So feel free to follow along, and you'll have plenty of time to complete this on your own after the video is done. If you remember where we left off, we just completed setting up the MDM connector and linked it to our MySQL source in the MDM platform. So I'm going to go ahead and move over into uh, where we left off here in the Atomsphere platform. And I'm going to start by clicking on the execute tab here within our shapes palette so that I can grab a map. And I'll simply just go ahead and drag and drop that in between my two connector shapes. I'm actually going to create a new map. So I'll do so by clicking on the little green plus icon within the map field here. And that will open up a new map. As always, we want to rename the map first. So I'm going to give this a name um, sort of based off of what its function is. And we're changing this from the MySQL database format uh, to our MDM format. So I'm going to keep it simple and name it MySQL to MDM. And this is going to be for our map. Um, so that should be good enough since this will be our only map for this process. Now, if you remember, the reason that we actually set up our connection, uh, our two different connector shapes early on is because once we have those set up, there's actually profiles that are loaded into each of those. So it makes our map uh, very easy to set up because we know that the, um, that the profile that we use for our start shape is going to be in this source area on the left side. And our end shape, our end connector shape is going to hold our destination profile over on the right side here. So what you can do is simply click on the choose button here at the upper right hand corner of the source section. And then we have to remember what kind of uh, profile type we're looking for. In this case, it's a MySQL database. So we can keep the profile type of the standard database type here. And then click on the plus signs until we find the MySQL database profile. 
Once you've found that, you can go ahead and click it, click OK, and then it will load itself into the source profile area. Now our map can accept the data coming from our MySQL uh, source. And then we'll do the same thing for our destination profile. We'll go ahead and click on the Choose button here. This time, though, we are transforming it from database, and we're going to be changing it into a different profile type altogether. In this case, we're going to select XML, since that is the type that we chose before. And that's the type of profile that, uh, that our MDM uh, model is uh, based off of. And then we can go ahead and open the Master Data Management 1 folder. And then we can select the MDM Contact Upsert Request. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and click on the OK button. And now you can see that this has been loaded in on the right side in the destination profile area. I'm also going to add in a map function to give us a custom name field that we will use for our match rules. In order to add a function, I will click on the plus sign in the center section here, uh, which will actually bring up a new window. Next to category, I'm going to click on the drop down menu where it says user defined and I'll select string from the options here. Once I select string, it allows me to see all of the different string type functions. And I'm going to go ahead and click on string concat and then click OK. From here, it allows me to set up a certain number of inputs. So if you wanted to concatenate um, five different things together, you could add five different inputs. You can also add delimiters and a certain length to all of it as well. But we're going to keep things very simple. Uh, we're going to add in a, an input for our first name. And I'll go ahead and click Add. And then we'll do the same thing for our second one, last name, and click Add. I'm then going to go ahead and click OK. And here we can add in some default values. So what this means is if either of these fields don't receive any data, it will automatically fill in whatever you put in this box here. Uh, we are not going to use that since we do have data for all of these uh, going forward and we don't want to um, add in any other data. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then I'll simply connect my first name to the first name option my last name to my last name option. And then I will take the result and put that to our name field. Once I have my function set up, I'm actually going to then map from my source profile to my destination profile. And in the activity guide, I have a little uh, breakdown of which ones go to, uh, which elements go to which elements. So the first one is contact ID to ID. So I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop the contact ID over to my ID field. And then I'll do the same for all of the rest. So we'll go ahead and do email to email, first name to first name, last name to last name, mailing address one to my mailing street. And then finally, my phone to my phone field. Now that all of the fields that I want mapped from my MySQL side to my MDM side are done, you can then go ahead and click on Save and Close. Click OK to go back to my process canvas. And then I'm going to go ahead and link these together, just like that. Finally, I'll save my process so that I uh, so none of this disappears if I uh, come back to it a little bit later. And that's it. That's exercise number 13. So now it's your turn to go ahead and try it on your own. So once you've completed exercise number 13, feel free to start the next video.